What's up guys, my name is Potato and this is uh, well it's about as good as I'm gonna get to making a how-to video on how to make this table. It's more of just a bunch of pictures I've taken. While I was doing it, uh, I didn't really have the time to do any vlogs or anything like that because uh, most of the time the environment I was in it was really loud and I just I was so into the moment that I didn't feel like I, I forgot basically that's what it boils down to. I forgot the vlog during it but I took a bunch of pictures so what we're gonna do is start off with a parts list first off parts and tools that you will need uh, of course you will need five millimeter slow flashing LEDs uh, you can get these in diffused or you can get the same ones that I got which are non diffused uh, you'll actually save a bit of time and effort down the road if you buy diffused ones right now but uh, it's not needed. Just make sure that they are the two-pronged RGB flashing ones and not the four-pronged ones because those ones will not flash on their own. They will need some sort of outside source like an Arduino board or something like that. Which is uh, what I'll be getting into later on in the few next few months. I'm going to get myself an Arduino board and try to learn how to do it. Uh, definitely very excited about that. A power source. Depending on how many LEDs you'll have, uh, you're going to need one that has enough amps to power power, uh, power through it. Uh, you, can use, uh, you can use batteries for smaller stuff, like smaller arrays, like my first little test box. Uh, it ran on a 9 volt battery, but it, it didn't last very long. Uh, the, the lights got really dull really quick. So uh, I bumped my table up to a wall to the socket power, basically. You know, it comes from the wall, so I don't have to worry about it ever dimming. Uh, we'll go into more about that a little bit later. Uh, resistors, and this will change on uh, depending on that how many LEDs are in your array and your power source. So that is also going to fluctuate. I'll give you a, a pretty awesome calculator that's online where you can just input all the numbers and everything like that, your power source, LEDs, all that crap, and it'll give you basically a picture of what you need to do. Um, and again, I'll go into that a little bit later. You're going to need some poster board, uh, some sort of cutting device like a box cutter with some new blades because you're, you're not going to want to use dull stuff, um, a hot glue gun, soldering iron, solder, and flux, um, wire of some sort, a wire stripper, either shielded or not. Uh, you can use tape to isolate it, which is what we ended up doing. We used bare wire to line it all, to wire it all up. Well, you'll see that later. Um, a switch and a power plug make, bleh, make sure you're, that your switch is rated at the proper voltage. Uh, I'm using a 12 volt switch, so if you're using 12 volt, make sure the switch can handle 12 volts. Um, black duct tape, it's optional, but it helps make things a little bit prettier. And duct tape it holds on real strong. You can use electrical tape if you want, but you're just going to be going over and over and over. And better to have a wide piece of tape than uh, skinny. Uh, PVC pipe for connecting the plexiglass to the table so you don't squish it. Um, we'll go into that a little bit later too. I used uh, quarter inch 20 bolts, threaded body insert nuts, and connecting caps. These are all metric. You can grab standard if you want. There, there is zero difference between the, any of them. You, uh, just make sure that they're all matching. I happen to just find some really p pretty connecting caps that were quarter inch 20 so I just bought everything else to match those so uh, I went with the threaded body insert nuts and the bolts right off the bat uh, just because I found some pretty connecting caps and that was it uh, and of course plexiglass now uh, the plexiglass I grabbed was three quarter inch which is very very thick it's a, <laughs> it's a thick piece of plastic uh, I could have went with a half inch I didn't know that until after I bought it but um that's fine. Just go with whatever you need for your project. If you're starting off small, uh, you can go pretty much anywhere and buy really small sheets of plexiglass for super cheap. And uh, since mine's a table, though, I needed a thick piece. That way, it's not gonna, you know, vibrate and, and wobble and stuff like that. If I have a bunch of stuff on there, I need it to support some weight. And uh, I want to thank Brenny for helping me pay for at least half of that. Uh, the, the thing cost me over $200 just for this piece of plastic. It's very expensive. It is by far the most expensive part of this build. And um, so thanks again, Brenny, for helping me out with that. Uh, he's our sponsor of this build, if you will. And uh, if you're going to be doing any of the woodwork like me, make sure to grab sandpaper. Uh, try to have at least three different types of grits, you know, working from a high grit to a more fine grit. That way uh, you get nice smooth things. Um, 
make sure to sand and stain with the grain, not against it. Uh, apply thin coat of clear coat and uh, sand with fine grit before spraying that clear coat again, which we'll, we'll explain in deeper detail as we go on. So let's get to it. Step one, creating the box. Now my box is 36 inches by 20 inches uh, with an array of nine by five, four inch cells, which makes it a total of 45 LEDs. First, we're gonna start by creating your base. I couldn't find the proper poster board because uh, all the poster board I found was shorter than what I needed. So I had to improvise. I did this by interweaving the design with two pieces of poster board. Um, I filled in the cracks with hot glue and then I ran some clear packing tape over both sides. And uh, I was actually really surprised by how strong this, uh, this bond became. Uh, I was able to flop it around and um, I was actually trying very hard to break it and it was doing very good. So uh, this technique came out really well. It was just two inch uh, by two inch like interweaving things. You can see up on the video right now. Um, and to hide the ugly design on the opposite end, I did a quick fix with some printing paper and just taped it over it. Uh, I cut little strips just wide enough to cover the, the uh, interweaving part and that was good enough. After creating your base, you're going to need to decide on how big and how many cells you're going to have. Since I was doing 9 cells by 5, I went with 4 inch squares because it came out even. Uh, I needed this box to be thin, so I went with uh, one inch high. Uh, this proved to be very difficult because working with the poster board is, is damn hard, especially when you need it to splice two pieces to make it long enough. Uh, I did the same technique as before. I just uh, used more hot glue and clear tape with that, and it, it worked out all right. It was a little difficult working with it, but the tape and the hot glue really do a good job at holding those two together. Uh, when you're done cutting your strips, you're going to need to cut slats in at 4 inch intervals or whatever size cell uh, you decided to go with. Uh, go about halfway through and then stop because they need to slip into each other. So uh, make sure that you only go half. You can go a little bit more than that if you want to be on the safe side, but you don't have to. Make some uh, lines on your base, that way they line up well. Uh, to make it easier, you can put the opposite end together. So it holds the shape of the grid as you hot glue the other ones in on the other end. Uh, and then just work your way down the line. And once your grid is put together, glue it down onto the base and you'll, you're good to go. Creating the outside edges can go one of two ways. You can either make them a tad bit longer and wider and just glue them to the outside of it. And this will prevent light from, uh, from spreading through. Or not spreading through, but coming through. You guys get what I mean. Or you can do the same technique that you did for building the inside grid and make slats for it. And um, that's what I ended up doing uh, because I tried to keep everything inside of that 36 by 20 inch box. So I, I did it on top and I did the same design but my cuts weren't very defined. So uh, a lot of light was actually coming through the box and I used black duct tape on the outside of the box to block the light from coming through. And it, it looks good. It looks like I framed the, uh, the, uh, the box. All right, step two, uh, to measure things out. Uh, should always measure twice and cut once. It's an old cliche, but it's damn well true. Since I'm going to be using the old table legs to help support this, I need to run bolts from the existing legs. The way we went about measuring this was uh, time consuming, and there's probably a better way of doing it than, uh, than what, how we did it, but it all worked out for us at the end. First you need to find the center of your poster board. And then you need to find the center of your table legs. And then when you divide that in half, you'll have the outside edge of your leg from the center. Measure that out and then put the lines on your poster base and do this for the next three legs. Now you'll have a square on your poster base. This is the size of your leg posts, or the inside part, at least for me. Now to get the size of your leg posts, measure how deep they are and draw them out. I'm terrible at explaining this, honestly I am, but hopefully the visuals of what's on screen right now should help you guys out. Then mark the centers of those on their board. At this point, you can cut the circles out and start fitting in the PVC pipes, but you don't have to. I went ahead and did my LEDs first, so let's go ahead and do that. So step three, the LEDs. To line up the LEDs in the center of the boxes, take a ruler and put a mark every four inches around the outside of your baseboard. Then take a straight edge and connect all the lines diagonally. Then do the same for the opposite direction. Then take some sort of pointy device. I used a Phillips head screwdriver. 
uh, and poke holes where the parts of the diagonals intersect. Just make sure you do the right ones though and skip every other line since the other crosses actually line up with your grid on the opposite end so you, don't, you can just ignore those. Toss in your LEDs with the positive side bent against the board and the negative uh, lead still up. The negative of the LEDs will always be the shorter one. If you can't tell with your LEDs, the negative lead will also be the one that has a flat spot on the side of it. So just look at your LED and you'll know what I mean. So the way we ended up doing this was just getting a bunch of wires and stripping them down so it's just the bare copper to make soldering them easier. And we ran a single lane of wire down making sure to wrap it around each of the LEDs a few times just to make sure that there's a good connection. Then put a very small dab of flux on each part of the LED where it connects and solder them up. For those who are unaware, flux attracts solder so wherever you put it the solder is going to jump to it. So if you put it right where the joints intersect then you're good to go. It's important that you don't spend a large amount of time heating up the LED because that can burn it out. So remember, be quick. You can break your lights if they get too hot. After running all the positive lines, we laid down some clear packing tape to help isolate them from each other. This really isn't the ideal setup, but it works. So run all the lines to one single line and then solder them to a shielded wire. The negative leads need a little bit more work since they need to be soldered to a resistor before they get soldered onto the negative line. I went with some 430 ohm resistors since I'll be using a 12 volt power source. This is going to change depending on your power source and what LEDs you have. There are some amazing and extremely helpful resistor calculators online. Personally, I like the one at, uh, I think it's ledlinear1.org. Uh, there will be a link in the description and it will be up on the screen right now. Uh, you can even just Google resistor calculator and you'll get a ton of them. I like this one because they show examples of the arrays that you can use. So just plug in the information of your LEDs, which will usually be listed on where you buy them. I bought my LEDs from this place called FCB Electronics on eBay. And they list all the information that you need on that page that you buy them at. So you can even calculate all of this before you buy the, the LEDs and get the correct resistors as well. Then you do the same thing that you do with the positive line and run them all to a single output. We use electrical tape here to help prevent it from touching the positive line at all. And then we use clear packing tape over that. At the end, this was just a shiny ass box with a ton of tape on it. Not exactly how I would have liked to do it, but it works and no one's going to really see the bottom of the table once it's all together. A quick test run of this and we saw that we only had one LED that we needed to replace because we burned it out while soldering earlier. Honestly, this is not bad. Since usually with electronic projects, you'll have more busted things and stuff that works on the first run. So I was very happy to see that we only had to replace one. Step 4. Prepping the table. Now that we have all the electronics done, for the most part, uh, we need to get on preparing with the table. This includes double checking that the PVC pipes line up with the legs of the table two or seven more times, however many you feel comfortable with. Grab a drill bit and drill out the holes needed for the quarter inch 20 threaded body insert nuts, which is like the longest name for just one little part. You're going to need to make these holes a little bit smaller so the threads have something to grab onto as you wrench them in. They should be flush with the leg of the table once you're done. After I had all that done, I decided it's time to sand down my table to give it a nice new paint and stain job. Sanding is a very simple concept, so I'm not going to go very in depth with it. Basically sand with the grain and progressively work up to finer grit in stages. The legs of my table got a simple black spray paint job, so nothing too fancy there. I spent a little bit more time with the lower bit since it had just some wonderful drawings on them from a friend. I debated just keeping them the way it is because it's so awesome, but I sanded it down with the help of this hand sander thing that we just had and stained it with the darkest stain that I could find. Even after two coats of the stain though, it didn't come out as dark as I wanted it to be. I wanted it to match my computer desk, but still, it came out alright. After the stain dried, I gave it a quick light coat of clear, let it dry, sanded it down a little bit more with fine grit sandpaper, and gave it another coat of clear. After assembling it all back together, it's time to drill the holes in the plexi. This is where I let my brother take over because I had absolutely no idea of the proper way of doing this. After some measuring and some expert eyeballing, he drilled through. Now apparently, it's very important that you use a dull drill bit for this. There are some specialty bits we use for Plexi, but if you don't have any of those like we didn't, you can use a dull bit. It significantly lessens the chance of cracking your Plexi. You don't want to use a sharp drill bit because apparently it'll crack the Plexi. That's, it, just doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me either, but that's just how it is. And 
After going through and spending $200 on a three quarter inch piece of beastly plexi, thanks again, Brenny, for the help, I was a nervous wreck, hoping it wouldn't crack. Fortunately for us, it didn't crack. So, so again, use a dull drill bit and work to bigger sizes. So start with something small, then widen the hole as you go. My original bolts were not long enough to actually to reach the table, by only by a sixteenth of an inch. I was pissed, but we ended up getting some longer quarter inch 20 bolts and chopping the heads off of them and then getting some fancy caps for it instead. But it all worked out fine. Keep the bolts locked in place, we use some Loctite on the bottom of the bolts so they stick at the table end, but I can still remove the caps when I need to take it apart. So now that we have all the parts ready to go, it's time to put this all together. I wanted this table to be powered by batteries originally because I wanted it to be mobile with no wires, but the thing with batteries is that they lack the amperage needed to drive 45 LEDs. So I went with an old power plug that I wasn't using. I saw that it put out 12 volts and enough amps, so I used that. To find out how many amps you need to run to use your LEDs, take your max continuous forward current, mine was 30 milliamps, and multiply it by how many LEDs you have. So 30 milliamps times 45 is 1350 milliamps. Divide by 1000 and you get the amps you need. So roughly 1.35 amps. My power supply puts out 1.5 amps, so I'm good to go. My brother gave me an old power connection assembly which I spliced my power supply into. This way I can disconnect my table like a laptop without fear of open wires. Next to this plug, I put in a switch, so I can easily turn it on and off without unplugging and replugging the power cord. The switch is hooked up to my negative lead and will break it when turned off and connect it when turned on. You know, exactly what switches do. I use some wire nuts to connect my power and negative leads to the table because I still want to be able to take it apart if something breaks, and I want to do it easily. These lines will still be taped up against the bottom of the table so they don't dangle. Before I put the plexi back on, the lights were way too bright and defined for my liking so we need to diffuse them a bit. To do this, I went with the cheap route and put a piece of paper towel over each LED. You can do this easier by just buying the diffused LEDs already, or even using some hot glue that dries uh, foggy. I only had clear hot glue, so it wasn't an option for me. I found out that, I found out though, by just taping a small bit of paper towel over each one does the trick. And no, this isn't a fire hazard because these LEDs do not nearly get that hot even in their little boxes. And to top the diffusion off, I went with some privacy glass film that I found at a local hardware store, which I originally intended to actually apply to the bottom side of the plexi, but after two extremely failed attempts, I was just running low on the material and just laid it on top of the box and taped it down with some black duct tape. This worked out okay. Beware though, if you do try to apply this stuff to your own plexi, it is extremely sticky. You need to get their application kit, which is an extra 10 bucks, to do it properly. You don't want any bubbles or creases or anything inside of it. This was a very tough thing for me to do because I didn't want to spend the extra 10 bucks on the kit. Probably my downfall. With both of these diffusion techniques, I was able to obtain a very soft glow which looks amazing. The film will cover up how shitty the box was made and the paper towels will give it that soft glow. Awesome. So bolt your plexiglass down, plug it up, and have a beer. Or if you're not of legal age, a soda or some shit. You just got a badass table that you can brag to your friends that you made from scratch. If I was unclear at any part of this tutorial, please let me know. I'll try to answer your questions. I won't be able to keep up with this video as time goes on. So hopefully you guys got the gist of it. I'll leave the Instructables link down below that originally inspired me to make this table and where the original idea of this LED box comes from. And you guys can just check that out. He does a much better job at explaining everything that I just did. I'm just making a video because I took so many pictures and you guys wanted to see my side of this. So go check out his instructables. If you make your table, make a video of it and send it as a reply to this video because I want to see it. Anyways, I gotta go. Thanks again for tuning in and hopefully the next electronic little project that I have going, I'll have an Arduino board and things will get a little bit more interesting.